Join Director Doug as he spans the globe by sea, by land, and air to bring you the best of Figures in Action! <laughs> Director Doug here, and I'm here at Tulare Sci-Fi Con 2017 in Tulare, California, the heart of the Central Valley, and we have a distinguished guest, and you are... Bob Gurr of Disney, Disney legend. Actually, the uh, Walt Disney had hired 18 people in 1954, at the end of 1954, to be the original Imagineers. There's only two of us left. The other fellow is 97 in his house. So I'm only 86, I'm the kid of the bunch. I'm the last Imagineer still running around in public. What is an Imagineer? Imagineer is a coined word showing uh, imagination combined with engineering design. So in other words, you imagine things, but you have to engineer them. They're, they're ergo Imagineer. So you uh, Imagineer the Matterhorn and the Haunted House, just name a few. Oh, yes, I did in uh, 45 years, I did around 250 projects for not only Disney, Universal Studios, projects in Las Vegas, projects with Michael Jackson, projects with the, uh, the uh, Olympics at Los Angeles in 1984. Whenever anybody wanted some crazy new attraction that everybody else was afraid to do, I was now interested in doing it. Well, sure, we're sure happy you showed, showed up on the scene. Now, I might want to ask you a question. I know that you knew um, Mr. Disney quite well. What, in your estimation, did st stand out in a person like that to become such an icon for eternity? Well, first off, he was constantly curious all his life, from the time he was a little kid. What that means is, if you're curious, you always want to know about something even though you may never use it. But what happens someday if somebody comes along and says, say, I need something figured out here. Well, you already know a little bit because you've been absorbing uh, the world around you for a very long time. You do it automatic. Walt did it, and a lot of the people who work for him uh, did that, and I still do that today. Now, that leads to the fact that, yes, you'd like to do something and figure something out, uh, you never give up finding a way to do it. You never say, well, it's not going to work. You always have this attitude, well, you know, uh, we'll, we'll just find a better way to do it. Now, Walt was the kind of a guy who didn't sit in an office all the time and issue orders. He walked around, he would come into the designer's room, to look at the artists, he'd go out in the shops all the time uh, to see what's going on. Let's say, for example, something wasn't quite right. A typical executive would yell at you and say, you've done a dumb thing and I'll fire if you, if you don't get that and do it the way I told you to do it. No, Walt would never do that. He'd walk up, see something not quite right, and he'd say, say, Doug, uh, have you ever thought of doing it this way? Now, you just survived the fact he didn't like something, but he just left you invited to give more ideas to him. But if I had yelled at you and say, don't ever, you're not doing it the way I want, you don't want to contribute now. You don't want to be uh, giving a dumb idea. You follow that? So that characteristic that Walt could lead things, but allow you to be the creating person, and he kind of guided along with you without chewing you out for it. But at the same time, he never uh, gave you a thank you. He never gave you an attaboy. It was just assumed well, you know what you're doing, and uh, uh, what else should I say? Well, that's, <laughs> that, there you have it, and it's just really wonderful parenting. Yes, well, obviously his parents, his father was uh, quite strict. Of course, he grew up, you know, in the Midwestern period where you had to work on the farm, work hard. Work hard. You know, so I can appreciate that because in my life, see, I'm 86 now. Um, when I was a kid, I had paper routes. I had to milk my goats. I had to ride my bike to school. There's no bus to ride. Uh, so I knew what it was like to have to do hard work as a kid. Well, guess what? You're well established in the business world of the reality and responsibility that you got to do. Walt had that kind of stuff. Walt collected people that had those same attributes. You're from the Valley, but you went to Detroit to design cars, came back, got the job at Disney Studios. Right. And then the first project you were on was basically Disneyland. 
essentially. Yeah, it was a crazy idea. It seemed like it might be a temporary thing. How many people here remember the people mover at Disneyland? Ah, uh, yeah, the people mover. Everybody loves the people. I actually got a cheer. <laughs> yeah, that's a good cheer. You love the people mover. Uh, I designed those uh, cars in 1964, 65, and about uh, a year and a half ago, two of those cars sold, fully restored, for four hundred thousand dollars. Do you remember the schoolhouse? I remember it well. That was the next door to the building where my office was. And okay. I used to watch you kids out there all the time. Yeah. Uh, right. How many of you know what it's like to be a child actor? Um, you think you work all day? No, you don't work all day. You go to school most of the day. Yeah. And then they pluck you out. You go stand in front of a camera. And then you got to go back and finish your homework. Yeah. Tomorrowland on a mon mon monorail test run. Uh, you took you took Richard Nixon around the park on the ribbon, ribbon cutting ceremony day. You did do it. You did manage to get the the, the monorail around because you, it, at, at that point in time it hadn't actually made the full loop. You no, we, we only got the train running uh, one lap around the night before. We will, in part two with you this afternoon here from the stage, get into you uh, burning down Tomorrowland from the monorail and uh, other test fire shenanigans from the submarine ride, the Matterhorn, and some of your other attractions that you designed. We'll talk a little Jurassic Park and the T-Rex. We'll also talk some Godzilla. I was actually already appearing on a show called uh, The Pinky Lee Show. Do you remember the schoolhouse? I remember it well. That was the next door to the building where my office was. And okay. I used to watch you kids out there all the time. Yeah. Uh, right. How many of you know what it's like to be a child actor? Um, you think you work all day? No, you don't work all day. You go to school most of the day. Yeah. And then they pluck you out. You go stand in front of a camera. And then you got to go back and finish your homework. Yeah. Uh, it's very rigid. But anyway, the, the back lot had all these cute kids uh, running around. And of course, Annette Budicello. Uh, yeah. Running around the back lot all the time, so this was uh, it was just as thrilling as designing Disneyland. Yeah. Was watching the Mouseketeers at work, and you were one of those. Yeah, we you want to know? You want to know how long ago the Mouseketeers was? Look at this face. <laughs> <laughs> one of the survivors. <laughs> well, there's another five. Cool. I got five. That is so awesome. Thank you again. It's such a pleasure to meet you and an honor. Well, Doug, it's my pleasure. My pleasure very much.